Hi, this is Eric Olson from Helps Nonprofit Law Firm. Um, I'm going to title this video, What Do I Do If I Can't Afford My Rent? Uh, or How to Get Cheaper Rent? What to Do? I just got off the phone with a, a, a client of Helps. Actually makes pretty good money, $3,300 a month. Uh, not a lot, but more than a lot of our clients make. Uh, she lives in Illinois, and when she enrolled, she was paying $2,200 in rent, and I think it's gone up by $200, so that leaves her about $1,000 to live on, uh, which is barely enough, not enough. Uh, but that's a huge amount of rent for a single person to pay, and she's over 70 years old. She just signed a lease. She says her credit is at 500, and she didn't know what to do. So um, I know there's a lot of places in the country that where you can rent a lot cheaper than $2,200 or $2,400 a month or whatever it was. There's a lot of places. Uh, and I told her, you've got to find a less expensive place to rent. And I offered to talk with her and her son together because if she moves, she might need some help moving. Uh, although sometimes I'll tell people if they have to move a long ways away and they're worried about their furniture, I mean, you can just leave the furniture. Furniture is, you know, pretty cheap in the long run. You can replace it and just take what you need. But, you, you know, for a lot of seniors, just have to get less expensive rent. So what about the, the credit issues? Well, Helps has a, we have another video where we talk about what we call as the landlord letter. And we offer to any senior what we call a landlord letter that explains to a prospective landlord that even though a senior may have negative credit or poor credit, their income, social security or their pension is protected by federal law. And it's, will always be available to pay their rent. And then we also want a client to point out that, you know, they never had an FED. So if there is a credit report run that doesn't show that there was a, an eviction, then that's positive too. And sometimes we'll tell the client, you take that landlord letter and you show it to prospective landlord and you tell them, uh, you know, I, before I pay my application fee, I want to, I may have negative entry, so I want to know if I would still be considered. And then the landlord could, ap taking the application, could read that. And a lot of landlords don't understand that seniors' income is protected, that it, if they're sued, and it can't be garnished or taken from them. So our experience is a lot of landlords will say, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we can take your application. Actually, seniors are very good tenants for landlords because um, they pay their rent. They, they, they know it needs to be paid. They're really good at it. Um, so that's available to anyone. Now, in this particular case, she just signed a lease probably for a year. Um, I explained that, you know, if she could rent a cheaper place, she's desperate. If she could rent a cheaper place uh, and get, pay it down and get, you know, something that she could afford, she could break the existing lease, okay? Uh, because her income is protected. Chances of them are sooner are really small. She's going to be moving anyway. And But if they did sue her, they got a judgment they couldn't collect from her. But it's unlikely they'll even do that in the first place. Now, you know, it's always better if you can avoid breaking a lease, but sometimes you just can't. Um, and this might be one of those situations where... Your lease payment is just beyond your ability to pay. Now, where do you find a place to to rent? Well, I mean, nowadays, I guess it's the internet. You get on Craigslist or, you know, you look around and uh, um, you try to find a place that's affordable. Now, she asked me about Section 8 housing. We tell a lot of clients about Section 8 housing. Section 8 housing is a government program for lower income seniors um, for them to be able to 
or, or any person, but generally lower income senior, seniors or disabled persons to be able to rent, where the government subsidizes the rent. Um, but in her case, her income was way too high. $3,300 in income was too high. She's not going to get on Section 8 housing. Um, but if it was less than that in certain areas of the country, she could apply. And usually there's a waiting period. Sometimes it's a year or two years to wait. Uh, sometimes I'll tell people, well, at least apply, get on the waiting list, because, you know, in, in a year and a half or two years, if you get offered it, you'll be glad that you got on the waiting list. So even if those are waiting lists, don't does don't let that hesitate you getting, you know, trying to, you know, sign up for Section 8. But of course, if you have income like this lady did over that amount, that's not a possibility. But, uh, you know, you do what you need to do. If you had to break the lease, it wouldn't be in the world. The landlord's going to be able to lease it out or rent it out to someone else. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with trying to look for a place while you're on a lease to figuring that you're going to get that place and break the lease that you're in. So at least you're going to, you know, if she's paying $1,500 rather than $2,200 or $2,400, that's a huge difference, or $1,000. But um, I think we've got emails or also you can, that talk about, you know, different parts of the country where rents are cheaper, okay? Uh, and that's really the case. I mean, rents are cheaper in a lot of places. Uh, um, it, so don't be, don't hesitate to look for something. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, one thing to remember is that what helps is we're a nonprofit law firm. We represent seniors who have protected income, social security, pensions, disability, VA benefits. In order to stop collectors from contacting and harassing them. When people enroll in helps, we send what's called a cease and desist letter to the people they owe money to and they have to leave them alone. Then we also educate seniors how they can maintain their financial independence. And that's why I'm doing this video, okay? So if you're locked in a lease, if you think you're locked in a lease, you can't afford, you can break it. The only thing I would say is it's better not to break it until you've got another place in, another place to move that's, that you've locked down, then you can break that lease and not pay it anymore. And uh, they can't really collect from you. Um, but, you know, it's not the best situation, but you got to do what you got to do. And hopefully this has been helpful and you have a great day.